I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I do believe He'll come again. And I know one thing I'm gonna do till then is learn to live in the blessing of Abraham. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Covenant Living Broadcast. My name is David Weeder. This is Lynn Weeder, and we are so glad that you joined us today from wherever you are in the world. Hey, do me a favor. Just jump on our website, davidweeder.org. It's, um, it's really simple. And um, send us a message. Let us know where you're watching from. And uh, just that you're that you're watching and join the broadcast. To, you know, I don't know. Just send us a picture or do something. <laughs> let us know you're out there. We're so glad that you're joining us today. Let's have a word of prayer. Well, actually, you know what? I, I do this every now and then, and it's, it's so important that I do. The reason that this broadcast is named Covenant Living is because this is a copy. This is record of two covenants. The first covenant, or what most people think of as the Old Testament, really the first and second covenants as opposed to the Old and New Testament. It kind of, it loses something. And it, it's, people are like, well, why do you even bother to point that out? Because Testament, it, it does, just doesn't have the impact. This, this is a covenant. And even, even today, people don't have as much understanding. To them, a covenant is like you can't paint your house pink, you know, because of the neighborhood covenant or whatever. Um, but no, 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 no. This is blood <laughs> covenants. This is this is serious. These are covenants that are established in blood. The first covenant at first was established in the blood of animals, and then later you can find in Genesis chapter 17 where uh, you find a covenant of blood that involved man's blood, shedding of man's blood, and then. Oh, man, our covenant, which is a better covenant based upon better promises, the word says, is in the precious, spotless, sinless blood of Jesus himself. It can never be broken. It's a covenant between God the Father and God the Son in the blood of the Son of God. It can never, ever be broken. Now, you can get away from the fellowship and its protection. You can remove yourself from the, from the fellowship of the covenant, from the benefits of the covenant, but you can never break it. It is an unbreakable forever covenant. Praise God. That's why in everything, this is literally life's user's manual. Everything that you need to be wildly successful in every area of life beyond anything you could ask or even think is based and found in covenant and it's covenant promises backed by the blood of the lamb. And that's why <laughs> this broadcast, the Lord instructed us to name it Covenant Living because we are supposed to be living 24-7, 365 in our covenant benefits and rights and privileges that are provided in this word of the living God. That's why, that's what this is all about. That's why it was, it's not a lot of, I'm, I'm not against, you know, dancing up and down and, and whatever, you know, segments here and flashing lights and all that kind of stuff. But that's not what this, that's not what the Lord instructed us to do in this broadcast. It's a Bible study. It's learning the principles, the operating principles of the kingdom of God in which the word says we have already been made citizens. And so it's learning how to apply those laws and principles. And so that's why the format, that's why the structure, and that's why the name. So hmm. now you know. <laughs> Let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll get into today's Bible study. Father, we thank you so much. We come before the word today with, with humility and with great hope, great expectation, and great faith. For your word says that the Holy Spirit is the teacher of the church. We may walk in the, in the office of teacher, but we, we are constantly and continually aware that the Holy Spirit is the teacher of the church. And as that, sir, Holy Spirit, we, we ask you not only 
to think through our minds and speak through our lips, but also to speak directly to every person in the sound of our voice today and, and reveal to them what you would have them get from today's message and even beyond the human words that are spoken, that you unwrap and unveil the mysteries of the operation of the kingdom of God and reveal it to their minds so that they can apply it and, and allow it to produce abundant fruit in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Grab that cup of coffee or cup of tea or mm-hmm. whatever and pull up to the table here and let's get into the Word. Let's start of the foundation scripture over in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I want to just really impact this concept. It says, and now abides or remains, lives, faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love, faith, hope, and love. There's a lot of things that may have passed away after with this with this earth that we may not have in the in the kingdom as this earth passes away. But these three, hey, they remain. <laughs> he will be with us. Faith, hope, and love. And we've seen over the last several weeks about how faith and hope it's not exclusionary. It's not one or the other. It's both together. And we're supposed to have hope all the way through until the end. Faith and patience come in. Get the job done. (laughs) And then you inherit the promises. That's what we read in uh, Hebrews chapter 6 last week. So let's, let's go on. Just keep that in your thinking. Faith, hope, love, they always remain. They always abide. You're fine. Um, Let's look now. uh, Let's look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, we're going to see a, a, a little bit different aspect of hope here. In verse 19, Romans chapter 8, verse 19, for the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. Well, now we know expectation is hope. Now we've got a descriptor added here. Mm-hmm. The earnest expectation. Now, if you look that word up, it literally, you'll see things like head and neck outstretched. That's the picture here. What does that mean? Intense expectation. Uh, Lynn talked about it. (laughs) We talked about it. I believe it was last week. Just that when you get the baby's coming, you know, and it's been coming for nine months. And then there is a point where that baby's, really come. <laughs> it's an intense time of expectation because here in just a couple minutes, you're going to be holding that promise. You're going to be holding that baby in your physical hands and all of this time of expecting. Hey, the faith has already been, the faith's been there this whole time because the seed was planted and the baby is, I mean, you've got that baby, but you've been expecting. When, and when are we going to hold this baby in our hands? When is this going to be real in our lives? And hey, it's about to be, and it becomes an intense expectation. And when she was holding on to my hand, my hand knew <laughs> that it was an intense time of I'm spreading expectation. the expectation. She, yeah, she was. Yeah, she was communicating the level of expectation <laughs> that she was experiencing. At that moment, praise <laughs> God. And it, it was intense. And so anyway, you see this thing, the whole earth, the whole earth is expecting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Let's wrap this thing up. Hey, today, don't forget, today we are one day closer to the resurrection. Glory to God. Well, do you have an escapist mentality. I don't know what that is exactly. All I know is I'm going to win the whole time I'm here, but I'm ready to go. <laughs> let's let's wrap this thing up. I'm expecting I'm expecting a grand blessed hope of the return of Jesus. 
Glory to God. Now, let's look at a, an example, an illustration of someone else that we know and love who's expecting. Turn back over to Hebrews. We spend a lot of time in Hebrews, don't we? It's a marvelous, marvelous, marvelous book. A letter. Hebrews chapter 10. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 10. And let's look at, uh, oh, let's pick it up in verse 12. But this man, about Jesus, this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, he doesn't have to do this again, he's done, sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth, from then till now, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. So the whole earth is expecting for us to step up into the power and authority <laughs> which he's given us and rule and reign, Romans says, as kings in life and put this thing back in order and keep it there. And now we see that Jesus himself, now he's already defeated death, hell, and the grave. Mm -hmm. Satan's, he sent his saddle home, he's done. Jesus defeated him right there in the pit of hell. So now, but now he's expecting until his enemies be made his footstool. Well, we're supposed to do that. He sent us, the church, go into all the world, heal the sick, raise the dead, put this thing back in order. Hey, look around. I don't, I don't recommend you do this much, but just flip on the channel, just the news for just a moment. And it is clearly evident that there are devils, demons, demon-inspired people running all over this earth doing all kinds of stealing, killing, and destroying. But he's expecting till he sees his enemies put under his foot. Is he in faith? Hey, hey, don't even joke about something like that. You know Jesus is in faith. He's also in hope. He's expecting now, here's a word of encouragement. Well, it should be encouragement to you. How long has he been expecting for this to happen? <laughs> a couple thousand years. We're not now. talking decades. We're not even talking centuries. A couple thousand years, and his expectation is not waned from the first moment. And let's be encouraged to keep our hope until the end because we're not talking about thousands of years here with, with what we hope for. Hey, I think, I think you and I can keep our, our hope jacked up for a few days till uh, we see the manifestation and hold that promise in our hands, praise God. So don't get discouraged. Stay in a perpetual, continual state of hope, expectation. Not wishing, not desiring. Remember now, we're not talking about this the common worldly view of, I sure hope so, I sure hope I'd win the lottery, I sure wish I would, I'd like to, it'd be nice, whatever, without any real expectation that it's going to take place. No, 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 we're talking about Bible hope, expectation, anticipation, confidence that this thing, it's already been done, it's just a matter of time. Just like you said, the imperial song, just a matter of when. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, I want to show something that, to a lot of word of faith, quote unquote, so-called people will come as a very large surprise. Turn back over to Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight. Because you know we're saved by grace through faith, right? So we got faith is involved in our salvation. We're saved through faith. Now look at Romans chapter eight and verse 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. We don't have the fullness of it yet, but we got the first fruits, bless God. Even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to with the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope. Uh oh, thought we were saved by faith. Yes, <laughs> we were <laughs> saved by hope too. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. We don't have to expect it. If I don't have to, I don't have to expect <laughs> that I'm going to get this cup. 
It is sitting right there. I can see it. I can touch it. I'm not hoping that I have this cup. Hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for it? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Let patience have her perfect work, the Bible says, and you will be entire, wanting nothing, as long as you stay in hope. <laughs> and faith, faith says it's already been done. Hope says, when's this thing going to get on the table? <laughs> and uh, I expectantly hope and wait for it, and it shows up, bless God. I just expect good things to happen every day. I expect piles of money to show up. We got a lot to do. We got to preach this word all over the earth, and I'm expecting the wherewithal to make it happen. Somebody said, um, I don't remember who this story was about, but they were talking about water being free, just like salvation. Water's free. Salvation is free. And then they gave an offering. And somebody said, well, what? I thought you said salvation is free just like water. He said, yeah, but that plumbing takes some money to get the water to you. <laughs> Okay. That's a, hey, that's the that's the case. It takes money to, to for lights and cameras and airtime and and all that kind of stuff to get the word to you. Praise God. So I'm expecting it to show up, piles of it to go all over this earth. I'm expecting to stay well. I expected to stay well all through COVID, and we did. I'm expecting to stay well. I don't care what they come up with next. And they, if I turn on the news and they say that something was developed somewhere over across the world and it's headed our way and it's going to wipe everybody out, that is not my expectation. My expectation is by his stripes ye were healed. And my a thousand can fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it won't come near me. My expectation is... I'll be Deuteronomy 28, 61 says that every sickness and every disease not even named in the book is under the curse of the law. And Galatians 3, 13 says, I have been redeemed from the curse of the law. So I don't care what they come up with and I don't care what they name it. <laughs> it is covered in Deuteronomy 28, 61 and Galatians 3, 13. And I expect to stay well all the way through until the end. And you should too, praise God. So, we are saved by faith. We are saved by hope. And a person who has hope, a person that is born again, it doesn't matter what the economy says. It doesn't matter what the news media says. None of those things matter he will just keep expecting anyway. And do you know where we get that? From our father in the faith, Abraham. Go over to Romans chapter 4. I am not, now this is, this is important to remember, I'm not waiting to see if it's going to happen. It's a done deal. I am hoping and expecting till it shows up in the physical. Let's look down through here at the account. This is about Abraham and talks about Abraham's faith. Romans chapter 4, and we'll pick up in verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. 
He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Praise God. He, against hope, believed in hope that he might become. Well, now, faith is now. And call things that be not as though they were already. And yet, he hoped against hope that he might become. That's future, my brother and sister. You can hope against hope that you're healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet and you're going to become that. You can hope against hope that you might become financially wealthy so that all of your needs are abundantly supplied and you enjoy everything that he has richly blessed us with that you might become. Let's, what is that? That's a little bit strange to us there in the King James that he hoped against hope. Let's look at a couple uh, trans, different translations of this. In the English version of the Bible, it says, he believed and hoped even when there was no reason for hoping. The basic Bible says, who without reason for hope in faith went on hoping. And the Weymouth version of the Bible says, under utterly hopeless circumstances, he hopefully believed. That's what it means. I, I, I think of it like this. I'm sitting in the living room watching the ball game. I've got no smells coming from the kitchen. I got no sounds of mama and grandma in there cooking the favorite foods. It's not a special day or anything. I have no reason to believe that I'm about to get something good to eat. Nothing. There's no, no indicate. Nothing. Nothing <laughs> is indicating that I'm about to get something to eat. But I'm hoping anyway. I am expecting any minute that I'm going to get something to eat. Now, I told my dad earlier I'd really like to watch this game. And I'm, I'm just going to sit here. I, you said, you said that you wouldn't let me go hungry. Now I'm, I'm expecting some food. So I'm sitting here. I'm expecting it I, any minute now. Any minute now I'm going to eat. But there's no good smell coming from the kitchen. There's no clanging of pots and pans in there. I ain't hearing nothing. I'm hoping against hope. Under utterly hopeless <laughs> circumstances, I'm expecting to eat any minute. I go open the door. <gasps> Dad showed up, and he brought me my absolute favorite food from my favorite restaurant. And now I sit down and eat because I got it in my hand. I had no reason to hope whatsoever. There was no smell, no pots and pans, nothing. But my dad said he, he was going to supply food for me. And so I'm expecting at any moment against hope with utterly no reason to hope. I'm expecting some food somehow or another any moment now, and it shows up. That is a picture of what we just read. Abraham hoped against hope. And what, is that re what does that lead to? Notice that next verse, and being not weak in faith, that is the definition of not being weak in faith. You hope against hope, but your hope is there, and it takes you all the way through. You keep it all the way through the end because you had faith. Daddy said, he promised it. I accepted the promise. Now I'm hoping against hope, and that provides that anchor, sure and steadfast, to my mind, my will, and emotions. That is not being weak in faith. And it's the Abraham kind of faith. Don't tell me not to have hope. You have to have faith. 
our father in the faith, Abraham himself, had and operated in hope. He hoped against hope. His hope was stronger than most folks' hope. <laughs> he hoped when there was utterly no reason to hope. Praise God. Whew. Hope, faith, and love now abides these three. From this day forward, <laughs> promise me now, you are not going to be disparaging towards hope. You got to have it and you got to stay in it and stay in a continual state of hope all the time. Now, don't go anywhere. It's got something special I want you to hear about. Hey, I'm telling you right now, you need to make your arrangements and get to Arkansas. <laughs> you need to get there August 24th, 25th, and 26th. We are doing a conference up there. Save the Nation is the theme. I'm going to be kicking it off on Thursday night. Happy Caldwell is going to be speaking during the conference. We're going to have music and ministry by Jeremiah Yoakum. You do not want to miss this conference. It is a good central location. You fly right into Little Rock. It's in Conway. The meeting's in Conway, which is just outside of Little Rock a little ways. Beautiful area of the country. You need to be there. The word will be taught. I guarantee it. Praise God. It's going to be a good time. Like I said, August 24th, 25th, and 26th, be there and make it a point to not miss this conference. Hey, uh, I, <clears throat> I got to tell you something uh, about myself here. <laughs> I got to tell on myself. Here a number of years ago, Brother Copeland just turned, I'm driving him somewhere. He turned around and just looked at me and said, hey, you are going to get invitations to speak and you got to go do it. And then here recently, he said, you're dragging your feet a little bit too much on this now. You need to go out and do it. Well, just wanted to let you know, uh, you know, in the upcoming months, I've still got some few dates available here and there and yonder if uh, uh, to go and speak and preach the word and minister healing and just, just all the stuff that I enjoy doing. <laughs> so i uh, tell you what, if, um, if you want to have one of us come minister at an event or at your church or anything, there's uh, information at the bottom of the screen. There's even a QR code. All you got to do is hold up that smartphone thing camera and then mm -hmm. push the little deal. And it'll take you right to a page. It's got all the information about it. It's got more information about us and, and uh, of how to contact us to uh, have one of us come minister to us. We'll pray over every invitation that we get. The Lord says, go, we go, even if it's someplace like Ukraine or the other side of the earth. I've been <laughs> there, done that, and looking to do it some more. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, hey, we've had a wonderful time today. Uh, trust that you have. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next week, always remember, God is never against you. Never, ever. He is always, always for you. And He loves you, and we love you so much. And Jesus is Lord. Thank you partners and friends for helping make this broadcast possible. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. You can also listen to our broadcast on iTunes. For more information about our ministry, contact us at davidweeder.org 